Okay, so in this video, we will give a slightly more involved example of factoring using the idea of a difference of squares. So recall that, in general, a squared minus b squared factors as a minus b times a plus b. And this is, of course, true for any choice of a and any choice of b. So let's now look at something more interesting. So suppose that we are considering 5x minus 1 squared minus 2x plus 3 squared, and that we want to simplify this given polynomial by factoring as much as possible. Now, a horrible solution would be to expand each individual polynomial, then we group the constant terms together, the multiples of x together, the multiples of x squared, and then try and factor this again. But this is way too much work, as we can notice that we have something squared minus something else squared, so we have a difference of squares, where the first term, 5x minus 1, is a, and the second term, 2x plus 3, is b. So we can look at this as a squared minus b squared, and this factors, of course, as a minus b, so a 5x minus 1 minus b, and here we have to be careful. All of b is being negated, so we will obtain negative 2x, negative 3, times a plus b, so 5x minus 1, plus now 2x plus 3. So let's simplify each individual factor. 5x minus 2x is 3x. Negative 1, negative 3, negative 4. 5x plus 2x, 7x. Negative 1, positive 3, positive 2. And now the factoring is complete. Much more efficient to use the difference of squares than to expand both terms, regroup, and try to factor again. Now, if we wanted to, and again, there's nothing wrong with this, but if, if we wanted to have leading ones for the multiples of x, then we could factor 3 from the first polynomial. If we factor 3 out, then we're left with x minus 4 over 3 times, and again, if we want a leading one here for x, factor 7, and then you're left with x plus 2 over 7. And if we regroup now the two constant multiples, so 3 times 7, 21, and so we have 21 times x minus 4 thirds times x plus 2 over 7. And the reason why you might want to do this is if, say, you are interested in finding the zeros of this polynomial. So if you were asking, where is this equal to zero? Well, from the initial factoring, you'd have to do a little bit of work to figure out the x value here and the x value here. But once you have a leading coefficient of 1, then it becomes clear. Either this factor is zero, in which case x is 4 over 3, or the second factor is 0, in which case x is negative 2 over 7. And this is how you can take advantage of the idea of difference of squares to factor efficiently polynomials in this form. And that's it.